Hello everyone and welcome here for a new playthrough video. Uh, this time it's of uh, Victoria 2 again and I am using a modification called uh, Divergences or uh, yeah Divergences uh, which as you can probably see is an alternate history mod uh, so there's a lot of different things to consider here. I'll just walk you through some of the basics of what countries are around uh, but I won't delve too much into the history. Uh, in the description I have left a link to the history file where uh, everything is sort of explained, the timeline, the uh, points of divergence and what really goes on and how the world has come to look like this. So I can just take you for a short spin around so you can just see what countries are around uh, and just uh, see and I will shortly be able to probably probably be able to explain what is going on in this world okay so I am Aragon uh, as you can see here Aragon uh, has not been uh, taken over by Spain in this timeline. In fact they have a very decent empire of their own. They own all of southern Italy. Uh, in their sphere of influence is most of Italy so that's all very good and they have they have parts of Africa under their control and are as you can see a greater power and uh, the interesting thing is that Aragon can unite to form the Kingdom of Aragon, Italy, uh, which requires me to have spared the rest of Italy under my control, or you know, I'd have to annex it. So uh, I will be trying for that and enjoying this game and having a lovely, lovely unified country, of course, and uh, I can probably do a lot of interesting things. Now, uh, Aragon here, of course, uh, have Catalan as their main. Uh, primary culture, but they also have both so Italians and Castilians as accepted. So the interesting thing is that even after I form Aragon Italy, I can also sort of eat into Spain and have a lot of accepted cultures there. So I will have a very strong base for my military and uh, a very loyal population, hopefully, even if I won't have calls in uh, many parts of Spain. So. Uh, the first part, of course, is to establish some national, fo national focuses. I want to get bureaucrats as fast as possible. Uh, as you can see here, I have an island here in the West Indies, and I am pretty sure I have an island here. Uh, I have one of these Atlantic islands. As you can see, they are actually divided between three nations. Uh, in our timeline, these were all owned by Great Britain. So. Yeah, uh, just going to start building my military. As you can see, I have a very strong military base uh, from which I can recruit uh, units. So I'm just going to build lots of regulars and and some artillery and get this game going. So I'm just going to purchase also a stockpile of supplies so I can quickly start building my new shiny armies and just increasing taxes, military spending and everything to get a decent amount of income. Um, Aragon have uh, business schools and tycoon capitalism meaning of course that I get cheaper commerce and industry and no penalty to culture. I have a, a small penalty to army and naval research which for me is fine I usually don't prioritize army and navy a lot uh, because most wars I go into I just have a very 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 uh, sort of superiority over my enemies so it's fine I, I will need some research of course but uh, only the bare necessities and I can focus a lot on on what I need, so that's very good. Uh, 
here we have the Kingdom of Aragon, Italy, which requires me to, as I said, have all of Italy uh, directly or indirectly controlled by me, and I need 50 prestige, and it will. Uh, yeah, so it will. It will. Well, I look at what I'll do. There was a lot of description there, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't. No, never mind. Uh, I'm just going to build up my armies now, for now, and see how everything goes. Uh, getting up some naval bases to to ensure uh, I can colonize later on. Of course, I would. I will want colonies as a major European nation. Uh, I'll probably look at a lot of colonization in in. Africa. Uh, we're just running out of money here, uh, unfortunately, uh, which is probably you know because I just bought all these items for my stockpile. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to reduce my stockpile uh, a lot. So oh yes, uh, my first minister is an ivory tower intellectual. Uh, which means I get a lot of extra re research points uh, and uh, if you know me you know that if there is one thing I really really like and want it is research, research and even more research mostly because it implies I have, in, have an intelligent population and yes intelligence is, is intelligence I don't feel I need to even elaborate on why that is very good anyway um, just mumbling rambling intelligence is good yay uh, gathering up my army is going to divide them going to probably transport a lot of them a lot of them over to Italy I will of course want to share all these guys and what I'll do is that I'll uh, probably annex Modena, uh, because then I will neighbor every other Italian miner, uh, which means I get a bonus to to uh, how fast I get influence with them. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Spend. Uh, ho hopefully, I won't get a lot of infamy. Uh, of course, conquests are expensive. You you use uh, spend uh, like. Uh, uh, 22 infamy. If you're unlucky, of course, you can just end up not getting detected. Uh, well, it should be nice, of course. So yeah, I'm just going to ally these Italians here, and uh, they are already in my sphere, as I said. So will be nice, of course, to just have their help as I invade, and I probably won't actually need reinforcements over here, but I'm going to build them anyway. Just to see, uh, just to be sure I can quickly annex everything. So, yeah, I can probably start taking a little look at the world. I uh, just got a lot of information for that. Okay, so what you can see here is the dual monarchy, aka the Union of England and France. Uh, so what happened, one of the points of divergence in this mod, there are actually many of them, is that England and France, they uh, unified uh, in that uh, England won the Hundred Years War. And uh, I think one of the reasons for this was that Burgundy kept supporting uh, England in this war, so in the war, so uh, that was thing. So of course, as you could see there, uh, independent Burgundy too. Um, very nice, and uh, of course, uh, very interesting also. Uh, need a lot of stockpile purchase right now to build my navies and industries. So, so just going to get uh, that done. Uh, not, not a lot of machine parts available, 
satellites. So yeah, also I need cement. So just going to get all these required goods here, and I'll be off to talk more about this world and what's in it and what you might expect. So not getting all these machine parts anyway, so just going to not bother trying to falsify them right now. Uh, okay, just going to reduce my national stockpile once more to avoid having to take too many loans. I don't want uh, too many loans too early on, of course. Uh, there's a limit to how much you can borrow early game simply because there aren't a lot of money in the banks. Um, anyway, so yes, so you have the dual monarchy of England and France. Burgundy is independent. Um, and here in the Holy Roman Empire, which I think is supposed to still exist in a way, you have Bohemia, who have been the Holy Roman Empire em emperor for uh, a very long time. Okay, so you have, as you can see here from the spheres, these yellow here are the, the various spheres. So you can see Burgundy and Bohemia just have these two blocks here in Central Europe. So, yeah that map mode is much easier. As you can see here Bohemia and you can see Burgundy you can see England, France having Savoy so uh, so uh, yeah it's and so Central Europe is sort of just divided here and then you have Illyria and Hungary and, and all these guys here uh, and here we have Austria you know in our time when they were just big they annexed Bohemia they annexed Hungary and just really rapidly expanded a lot, I think was because of political marriages, which evidently didn't happen this time around. In the north, Scandinavia is unified. Scandinavia was very successful in this timeline, I think, because simply because the Kalmar Union persisted, of course, uh, it fell in our timeline, I think, because the Swedes didn't like the idea of being ruled by a Danish king. So, thanks to Sweden, we do not have a Scandinavia in our world. I hate them for that. Uh, but yeah, so Scandinavia is unified. They are also a very solid, greater power. Uh, uh, they uh, had a personal union with Scotland in this timeline, I think, because of political marriage, so, uh, which resulted, of course, in the union of these two countries. Uh, Scandinavia has Novgorod in their sphere, and this is another thing, Russia never unified, which I think is partly because Poland and Lithuania was very strong in this timeline. So you have Novgorod and Muscovy here, and Muscovy not not as big as or strong as they were in our timeline. Of course they were the ones who went to unified Russia. So uh, but they can still unify Russia though. Um, and so that's the thing you, you mo we might see later in the game. Muscovy becoming a greater power and taking Novgorod and Sibir and that's, that's forming Russia. I, uh, they need all their own cores um, here, uh, this green here, and they need no broad cores, all this green here. So uh, when they have that, they form Russia, and Russia also has cores and all this yellow stuff here. So, of course, they'll be able to expand a lot if they manage to form Russia. Uh, I haven't actually played this mod for more, like, for more than like three decades, so. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, how this plays out late game. Mm. Ottoman Empire, uh, in our, as in our timeline, uh, very sort of strong here. Yeah, uh, of course, not as big as our timeline, independent Egypt, but mm, without Sudan. Arabia is already unified and has calls on all of Arabia and some of Iraq. Iraq is also evidently independent. I'm not exactly sure why or how Kurdistan and Iraq and these guys are independent, but either the Ottomans never next them or they are rebels, I would assume. Macedonia and Albania and Greece are all rebels. Greece also rebelled from the Ottoman Empire in 1830 in our timeline. Uh, here I have, uh, I think the Chagatai Khanat, however you spell that word, Chagatai are uh, uh, a Mongol uh, nation uh, and uh, so they 
I, I don't think they survived all the time, but they were revived by some descendant of uh, Tamerlane uh, or something. And yeah, so in India, uh, you can see uh, you can see there are almost no colonies you have. I have a small colony here, and Spain has one here, and uh, Burgundy has one here, and Scandinavia has a considerable one here. So most of India is independent, uh, not the same colonialism and imperialism in India you saw in our timeline. But it's going to happen during the game, most of India will probably be eaten by by all these guys here. And you have Bengal as they are nearly civilized uh, as opposed to the rest of the Indians who are rather uncivilized. So that's a very interesting dynamic because they have a lot of population in just a small area here. They have 4.4 million uh, wild Mughals here, 14 million of course, so they are larger, but Mughal is very powerful. As I said, they are about to civilize. So that's very interesting. Uh, just going to declare war on Medina right now and call in my allies. Okay, I am actually allied with the dual monarchy. That's very interesting. And also, I have forgotten to start actually sparing someone here. Of course, that's something I should do. So I'm just going to try and add a true hair to my share and. Most likely my vessels will very capably handle Modina. Uh, I'm just going to send in two armies here and just in case. So yeah, getting need of course to spend some money on my military in order for them to have the required supplies to be able to invade. And then I'll go back to uh, Asia here. So we have uh, Indochina here. You have Hongu, which is pretty much like Burma, I think, in our timeline. So, uh, not very different there, of course. No British India here to pressure them. And you have uh, the Khmer surviving here, and uh, uh, Ayutthaya here. So, these are pretty much two Thai nations. Uh, so, instead of the Thai being united into one sort of Okay, the Khmer are probably more like Cambodia, I think, but yeah, so instead of Siam being very powerful here, you have uh, Khmer and Ayutthaya, and here we have uh, Malaya here, and Malacca divided into Patani and Johor, instead of just Johor and then Siam. Uh, Champa in the south here, uh, I think they are the Cambodians, and yeah, the Khmer are, well, Khmer, I think, they're their own mm, uh, nationality, yeah. And then you have Dainam also known in modern times as the Vietnam uh, here. So this is this is the Indochina uh, sort of dynamic. You don't have uh, all these small minor as vassals which you have in our timeline in Victoria. You have Cambodia as a vassal of Dainam, you have London as a vassal of Siam and you have some small Laotian thing here as a vassal of Dainam I think and etc etc. So a few powerful empires here in Indochina are going to be very interesting to see. And in China, uh, China, I think after the Ming fell, they never sort of united. You know, the Manchu didn't actually eat everything and form the Qing Dynasty as they did in our timeline. Right? So, uh, so they're sort of in a warring state period, and you have sort of the same thing as in India. You have this minor here, Tung Ning, which are nearly civilized, so they might be a power player, however they are small compared to the others, and in China even one province is enough to make you a powerhouse, simply because there are so many people in every province. So it's interesting, uh, as China of course, you can uh, as one of the Chinese dynasties, you can just take over everyone else they have, because the spell is for it, and then they can form China if they take uh, this, uh, the territories of these five guys here and also the stuff the Manchu owns uh, up here, so up to Beijing and one more province here. Uh, Japan is currently in the middle of the Boshin War, which is like 30 years or so earlier than in our timeline. 
and it is also civilized and that is modernized already so this is a more powerful Japan you'll see you'll also notice that they have bits of Korea, both of these Japanese here uh, they start out with one or more two provinces but as Korea occupies these provinces they sort of automatically get them back so you have Japanese versus Ashikaga versus Korea in a three-way Japanese civil war here and uh, you may, may notice that uh, both the Japanese Empire and the Ashikaga Bakufu uh, pronunciations, whatever, uh, have course on Korea and uh, Korea of course just trying to keep independent from Japan and they might be able to or they might not be able to and here we have the Ainu which is a sort of tribe uh, living in, in historically living here in in, uh, in Hokkaido or Hokkaido as it's called here and also small populations around here so evidently they they have spread a lot so they own of course all of Kamchatka and this area here that usually belongs to Russia but you know Russia is over here and there's a lot of Siberian wasteland that they have not controlled and of course there is this Kita Kaigan a Japanese New World Nation up in Alaska. Very small, of course, but very interesting uh, to see. Um, so that's one thing. Yeah, and here we have the Queen Kui, uh, which is a Chinese New World Nation. I think this is based on some Chinese explorer in the f I think the 1400s or 1500s or something around there. Uh, or the 1300s, I don't remember the exact date, who, you know, he explored everywhere and then I think they just sort of built on that and the Chinese have sent out colonists to Australia, as you can see there, are, there is no British Australia here, so you have a Chinese nation here, a colony here in Australia and you have a Chinese nation here in the New World, and Yes, which of course is very interesting. I'm uh, just going to make sure this war is going okay. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. And uh, otherwise, in the new world, you have on this side you have Vinland, which is uh, what the Vikings called Newfoundland when they f discovered it uh, early in the the ninth century. Uh, sometime during the 9th century anyway no, make that the 11th century the 11th century, I think the 11th century anyway and all, yeah, center of the 11th century, I don't remember all these specific dates but the Vikings discovered the new world, they called it Vinland which means either the land of wine or the land of pastures I think people are not quite agreeing on it anyway so this is a Scandinavian colony, obviously Scandinavia being united and with Scotland have a larger base for colonizing. So Vinland is a very big country here, they have the Great Lakes region and most of uh, Quebec and Ontario and they have uh, good opportunities to expand in here and if they become a greater power they can claim pretty much uh, uh, every province in this area here, uh, in addition to the coast they already have. In as you can see, they also have caused here on the seven republics. Uh, the seven republics, four, five, six, yeah, seven states, so seven republics, are a. I am pretty sure this is a Burgundian colony. Uh, as you can see, there are Afro Burgundian pups here, which I assume are slaves. So, yeah, it's a Burgundian colony. Uh, of course, very interesting in the Italian colonies area. They have also got a lot of course so there's a lot of dynamics here in the new world to course everywhere you can see these guys have course these guys have course these guys have course yeah I forgot to mention these uh, Rungst or how will you spell it is a Sino-Scandinavian nation of sorts uh, I think uh, Rungst here is sort of a Scandinavized spelling of the Chinese name for the Metis uh, or Metis which is a sort of a minority living in this area of modern of our Canada, so it's yeah it's just them having a nation uh, named in Chinese written in Scandinavian, uh, 
uh, I'm not exactly sure how this came to be, but I'm sure the mods history thread can probably give some answers to that. An area of Plantagenia, which is a Anglo French uh, colony, I assume, named for uh, the Plantagenet's uh, uh, pronunciations, yeah, the, yeah, 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 the Emperor's dynasty who unified England and France during the Hundred Years' War. Uh, yeah. So here you have Florida being owned by Venice, they have a very s small rump colony here. And you have Gran Colombia, which is basically just a large unified federation of Spanish states. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I think these have, they have events to fall, so they are split into Gran Colombia and Granada, and there are lots of calls. They can be called Mexico, there's United Central America, there's actually calls for the Maya and the sort of an Aztec or Zapotec civilization, and lots of, there's lots of Native American civilizations potentially releasable here. And in fact, you have an independent Inca empire here, uh, the Tavantin Su, which I think is simply the Inca empire for the Inca name for the Inca empire. They start out uncivilized, but they have an event chain that will modernize them just as we hit the new decade and will give everyone a lot of literacy. Uh, so they have opportunities also to expand way into Colombia here. It gets a lot of calls and accepted cultures and stuff like that. Uh, here we have Bionia, which is a English colony uh, with the English culture and they can actually sort of reclaim the old land that is England so if they sort of do that they get course and they can war for these course and if they get all these course they can reform back into England. Uh, here we have Lotharingia, I assume this is a Burgundian colony because Lotharingia is the historical name for this area here and you have Amazony, which uh, sounds very French, I'm pretty sure it's French, so we have French and English different colonies here for the two different cultures of the dual monarchy. And that should be it for how the world is put together. And I'm just going to go ahead and max Molina here. And I think this is it for now, and I'll see you in the next video as I'll actually be able to play something and not just talk about how this world is possibly put together. Thank you for now.